If you want to increase your FPS, then I'll be showing you guys every way that you can do that in this video. This will work for Valorant and every other popular game as well, like Roblox, Fortnite, Minecraft, Apex Legends, and more. The first thing I'm going to do is start off by creating a restore point. Head over to your search bar and type in create a restore point. Once this is opened up, click create. And for today's video, I'll just name this one like and subscribe. What this does is it creates a copy of all of your current settings. And if at any point something goes wrong or you don't like the changes that we made, you can press system restore and go back to before the optimization started. Next, let's head into Valorant. Open up your video settings and make sure your display mode is on full screen, not any of the other settings. And if you struggle with frames, you can turn your resolution down a lot to give your PC less pixels to process. This should improve your FPS by quite a bit. After that, if you have the option, turn on NVIDIA Reflex low latency and turn this on plus boost. This will help you tap heads faster. Something else that will help you guys get better is the Valorant Tracker app. The Valorant Tracker app is a in-game real-time tracking solution for all of your Valorant stats. You can see your own weapon stats, what maps you're best at, your best agents, and a lot more all inside of this app. The best part of it is the fact that I can see all of my teammates' ranks and their stats in the agent select screen, meaning I can lock duelists before someone with a 0.5 KD does. Something else I find interesting in the app is that some players have color bars by their names. Bars of the same color indicate those players are queued together but if they don't have a bar it means that they're solo queued that's not all there is to this app though it will actually track your stats mid game in real time and show underneath the leaderboard so you'll be able to tell if you're having an off game or not and i find this to be a confidence booster sometimes if i don't have many kills but i have a lot of damage per round if this interests you at all click the link in the description or pin comment to download valorant tracker and thank you to valorant tracker for sponsoring today's video now let's get right back to the video after you're done in the general tab head to the graphics quality tab at the top make sure multi-threaded rendering is on this will allow the game to utilize more of your cpu then for material quality we're going to set this to low texture quality will set this to low as well detail quality is also going to be set to low ui quality is going to be set to low after that we're going to turn vignette off this setting just makes your game feel slightly more cinematic so there's not much of a need for it and for vsync we're going to turn that off as well but if you get significantly less frames than your monitor's refresh rate vsync can be a good option but it will cause added input delay to have on. Anti-aliasing, we will have set to none. Anti-shropic filtering, we're going to set to 1x. Improved clarity, we're going to set to off. Experimental sharpening, we're going to set to off as well. Bloom makes your game look better, but if you're going for FPS, you'll want to turn this off. Distortion, we're going to set this off as well. And cast shadows is going to need to be turned off as well. All these five settings at the bottom here basically just make your game look nicer. So if you're going for personal preference, turning them all off does give you better frames. After doing all that, make sure your Valen is open and head to your search bar and type in task manager. Once it's open, head to the details tab. From here, scroll down until you find Valorant, Win64 Shipping, and Valorant EXE. Right click on either of them and go to set priority. Make sure this is set to high. Do this for both of them. After you've done that, head over to the startup tab and you're going to want to disable nearly everything here except anything you might need to be running on your PC, but it shouldn't be much. This just makes it so nothing will launch with your PC that you don't want running. The only important thing here to keep on is Vanguard. While we're here, head down to the carrot at the bottom right of your desktop and end any extra processes you might have running. For example, I don't really need Steam to be running while I'm playing Valorant or much else at all. After this, head to the search bar again, type in notifications. In here should be a way to turn off all notifications for you. These can pop up while you're in a game and cause you to lose a round, unfortunately. So I'd recommend turning all of these off. None of them are really important anyways. Next, go back to your search bar and type in background apps. Once this is opened, you can either turn these off manually or what I'd recommend is to turn them all off entirely at the top. These background apps can eat up performance from your PC, so it's nice to turn them off. Now go to your desktop and right click on it and then hit personalize. From here, click on colors and turn off transparency effects. This setting takes more performance away than it should. After that, type in graphic settings in your search bar and turn on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This will require you to restart your PC, but you can do that later. This setting will take a decent load off your CPU and put it under your GPU, which can help out with bottlenecking and get you some extra performance on value. After this, click on Browse, right-click below, and head to the drive you have Valorant installed on, then go to the Riot Games folder, then the Valorant folder, then to Live. Here, you'll want to click on Valorant.exe and press Add. Once it's added, click on the options and set this to High Performance. After that, click on Browse again and head back to the Riot Games folder. This time, go to the Riot Client folder. Here, you'll want to add Riot Client Services this time. Go to Options again and set it to High Performance. This will force Valorant to always be using your ideal GPU. Once you're done with that, 
go back to the search bar and type in choose a power plan. You want to change the power plan to high performance instead of balanced or power saver. This will use more power, but obviously it will make your PC run better overall. After this, type in settings into your search bar and find the gaming tab here. From here, you're going to need to turn off the Xbox game bar. There's really no reason for the Xbox game bar to be running at all unless you clip with it, but there's better ways to clip than with the Xbox game bar, such as OBS or a video replay. After this, go search again, but this time for advanced system settings. Once this is open, head to the advanced tab and click on settings under performance. In here, select adjust for best performance. This is going to affect how your windows look slightly, but it's going to save you some performance, so I'd recommend it. Next, we're going to type in run in the search bar. Once it's open, type in percentage temp percentage. This will open up your temporary files folder that you don't really need anymore, and it's just taking up storage. Just hold left click to drag and select every file in here and delete it. If any of these pop up saying you can't delete them, just press skip. You'll see it's deleting a lot of files that you won't need in here. Once that's done, type this PC into your search bar, open up this window, right click on the drive you have in Windows installed on and click properties. From here, you're going to press disk cleanup. You can check every single thing here. And once you have click on cleanup system files, this might take a bit of time, but once it's done, you'll have cleaned up a bunch of storage and made your windows slightly more efficient. After that, go to the tools tab and check your drive here. This will scan your drive for potential issues you might have. This will take a little bit as well, but it's good to do every once in a while to make sure. Once it's done, click the optimize button directly below. Now click on whatever drive you have windows on and click the optimize button and this will retrim the drive. Next, you'll want to open up GeForce Experience and head down to the drivers tab. If you have a drivers update, you should definitely download it. Driver updates tend to have performance boosts for your graphics card, even if they're small. After you've updated your drivers, head to your desktop and right click on it and open up the NVIDIA control panel. Here, head to manage 3D settings. There's a bunch of settings here. So let's start with image scaling. Turn this on and set it to about 50%. Ambient occlusion, we're going to turn off. Anti-tropic filtering, we're going to turn off as well. Anti-aliasing FXAA will be turned off as well. Then anti-aliasing gamma correction, we're going to have on. Anti-aliasing mode, we need to set to off. Background application max frame rate needs to be set to off. Set CUDA GPUs to all. This enables all of your CUDA cores to be used. Set your DSR factors to off. Low latency mode to ultra. This should help with latency and input delay. Turn max frame rate to off. Multi-frame sample. AA, we're going to turn off. Open GL GDI compatibility, we're going to set to auto. Open GL rendering GPU, we're going to set to our primary graphics card. And for power management mode, make sure to set this to perform maximum performance. For preferred refresh rate, set to highest available. After that, set your shader cache to unlimited. Then for texture filtering, antistropic, set this to off. For texture filtering, negative LOD, set this one to allow. And for texture filtering quality, set this one to high performance. Then for texture filtering, trillionaire optimization, set this to on. Turn threaded optimization to on as well. Make sure your triple buffering is set to off. And probably the most important setting here is to turn off vSync. You never really want this setting on in most situations. For virtual reality, pre-rendered frames, change this to four. After that, go to your configure surround physx settings on the left and change your physx settings processor to your primary graphics card to take some work away from your CPU and funnel it to your graphics card. If this video helped you out, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you think I forgot anything or have a question, leave it down in the comments below.